Hi guys, welcome back to world.com. I'm Michaela and today I'm going to be showing you some basic fabrication techniques like how to keep your joints at 90 degrees and ways to stop distortion. Now, the reason we struggle to keep our angles the same when welding is because when the metal is heated up it expands and then when it cools it shrinks which means the angles always change. Now a must have in every toolbox is an engineer's square. Now these are to check your angles are 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees on the inside and the outside and it's so easy to use. So today I'm using the Miller Destiny 280. All the welds I'm doing today are aluminium. So I've got my TIG unit set on an AC current and up to 160 amps. I'm also using a foot pedal for this. So in my torch I'm using a 2.4mm lanthanated tungsten with 2.4 e ESAB silicon filler rod and I'm using argon as my shielding gas. The first method to keep your angles in place while welding is tack welding. Now these are just little welds to keep it in place. I'm going to show you this on an open corner joint. When tacking you can use filler or you can do it autogenously which means without filler. So as you can see, I've literally just tacked both ends. I did this autogenously, so it's easier to hold the torch with one hand and the joint with another. And now I'm gonna go ahead and open it as I want this joint to be 90 degrees. You have to be careful when opening the angle as the tacks might break. And then once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna add two more tacks here and here. So I added filler to these two tacks just to make them a bit stronger and to hold them in place a bit better and now I'm going to use my engineer square to check the angle once again. Once I'm happy with it being 90 degrees I'm then going to fully weld it. Now I'm welding over the tacks and just fusing them into the weld. So here we have it fully welded and now I'm going to check it with my square again. Sometimes if you have penetration through the back it can be quite hard to see if it's square. That is just one of the ways to keep your angle whilst welding. Another way is pre-setting. Like I said at the start, as the weld pool cools it shrinks the material in. This is why we use pre-setting. Now this is where we predict how much the metal is going to shrink while we weld it. This does take some practice and I'm still learning myself, but I'm getting the hang of it slowly. So for this back weld, I'm only tacking one end at the moment. I'm using three millimeter aluminium and I'm gonna be leaving about a two mil gap just so I get a bit of penetration. So as you can see, I've tacked the top here with a slight gap, but then I've allowed it to open up more as I go down. This is to allow for the shrinkage to happen. So I'll end up with an even gap the whole way down. So this is the direction I'm gonna be welding. And as I weld in that direction, the gap will shrink and even out. As I was welding towards the end of the material with the bigger gap, you could see it closing through the weld pool. Now I'm going to check the back and see if I have an even gap. Now that looks pretty good to me. The next way I'm going to show you to try and control your angle and distortion is the direction that you weld in. 
So this works best if you're welding box section. So this is just 40 mil box section and I've cut it at 45 degrees as I want a 90 degree angle. But I've tacked it together and it's not 90 degrees. As you can see, the angle's over, but I have a way to pull it in which isn't bashing it with a hammer. <laughs> So as the angle was open and over 90 degrees, I welded inwards to pull the angle in. Now I'm going to check it with my engineer square. And I'm very happy with how that's pulled in. As I mentioned, it's a lot easier to pull the angles in than to open an angle up. The final way to try and keep your angles and minimise distortion is using clamps and jigs to keep them in their place. For this I'm using two G clamps and I'm going to test it on a bit of box section. Now I've cut them up 45 degrees again as I want to test them and make sure they're 90 degrees. So I'm going to put them on the edge of my bench. I'm going to use the engineer square to keep checking that it is 90 degrees and clamp them in place. So even when clamping them, I'm still going to tack it first, just to be sure. I'm going to tack both sides and then I'm going to check it for squareness again. When using clamps, you have to leave it clamped and in position until it's cooled, as if you take it out while it's still hot, it can move angles. Once it's cooled, I'm going to unclamp it. I'm just going to check the angle and make sure I'm happy with it. fully weld it, I'm still going to use clamps just to keep it in position again. When welding with clamps, the direction of travel doesn't matter as much as it is clamped in position, but when you're free welding it, that's when it moves quite a lot, and the direction of travel matters. Now I've welded one side, I'm going to leave that to cool, and then come back to it. Now this side is cooled, I'm going to turn it over and weld the other side. I'm going to check it with my engineer square again before I weld the other side as well. So now it's cooled, I'm going to unclamp it and check the angle. <laughs> That's the end of the video. These are just some of the ways that I like to try and keep my angles at 90 and try and stop distortion. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching.